been like for you? And, and when do you anticipate being able to participate in games? Yes, yeah, so I don't have a date yet, um, but I'm working towards, you know, getting back on the floor. Um, and yeah, so no date yet, but, you know, I'm, I'm starting to ramp it up. Hey, Ben, um, was there anything this season that could have changed your mind and got you to play again or was your mind made up and, you know, until you were out of Philadelphia, you were definitely not going to play again? For me, it was just making sure mentally I was right to get out there and play again. So that's something I've been, you know, dealing with. Um, and it wasn't about the fans or coaches or comments made by anybody. It was just a personal thing for me. Um, that was earlier than, you know, that that's, that series or, or even that season that I was dealing with. Um, you know, and that organization knew that. So it, it was something that, you know, I, I continue to deal with. And, you know, I'm getting there and getting to the right place to, you know, get back on the floor. Hey, Ben, there was so much like sourced reporting around everything going on with you. So I guess just you, so you're saying that the, the mental health issue preceded you requesting the tree uh, in the off season. Okay. I guess, can you just shed a little light on the timeline? And everything? Yeah, for me, it wasn't, that was never, the mental health has nothing to do with just the trade. You know, it was, it was a bunch of things that I was dealing with as a person in my personal life that I don't really want to go into depth to depth with. Um, but yeah, I'm here now. So, you know, it's a blessing to be, you know, in an organization like this. And, you know, I'm just looking forward to getting back on the floor and, and building something great here. First off, welcome to Brooklyn. Uh, for you personally, moving forward, I'm curious what the kind of things are, if you can even quantify them, have to happen, I guess, for you to be in the right headspace, to be out on the court and competing. Just staying on top of what I need to stay on top of um, and being consistent with that is getting to the place where I can do that. Hey, Ben, I wanted to ask you um, a couple of things. When you played your last game with the Sixers, what was going through your minds? What were your last emotions? Uh, and what was the straw that basically snapped that made you say, it's time to go? Um, I don't think it was. Really, that was more so just a, it was just piled up a bunch of things that have gone on over the years to where I just knew I wasn't myself and I needed to get back in, into that place of, you know, being myself and, and being happy as a person um, and taking care of my well being. Um, and that was like, the, that was the major thing for me. Um, it wasn't about the basketball, it wasn't about the money, anything like that. Um, you know, I want to be who I am and, and get back to, you know, playing basketball at that level and, you know, being myself. And the like, last game, last game, yeah, what's kind of what was going on through your mind after the last game? Um, that I need to get in a good place mentally, honestly. Um, that was the main thing. And when you look at this roster, the makeup of this team, there are times where you could be on the floor with KD and Kyrie, you could be out there without either one of them. How do you see your, how do you see your role in fitting in and or what kind of conversations have you had with Steve about uh, what that would be? Yes, I think it's just staying aggressive, playing to to my strengths, and that's you know being a playmaker and making the right plays, um, setting my guys up, and then defensively, obviously, um, locking down who I need to lock down. Um, so I'm excited to you know get in the floor with these guys. Is incredible team, incredible talent. So um, super excited. Hey Ben, how's it going? Welcome to Brooklyn. Um, obviously, Kyrie was away from basketball for a little while at the beginning of the season. He was talking about how difficult it was for him to practice to play against high caliber players because everyone's obviously in their seasons. What, what were you able to do while you were away from the team that would, I guess, be able to help you prepare for this moment? Just being consistent with my work um, every day, being very consistent with my work, uh, make, making sure I'm taking care of my body um, and then staying on the floor. So I was on the floor pretty much every day, um, just trying to stay ready physically. Kind of just touching that a little bit. So have you been playing pickup, like lifting, I guess? What has your routine been since you've been away from the team and everything? Right, so lifting, um, Pilates, all of that. And then on court, being with my trainers, um, ones, twos. We've had some bodies for, you know, three and three, four and four. Hey, Ben, I, I know you want to – you're moving forward. You're all about today and, and what's happening uh, in Brooklyn. But I, just, again, with all that sourced reporting around what was going on with you, I guess just for Sixers fans, like – did you feel like you couldn't get back to the place where you wanted to be 
in Philadelphia? And was that part of the reason you asked for a trade? I, I guess, could you explain that a little bit? Yeah, I think that was part of it. I think, you know, I just wasn't in the place there um, to do that. Um, and a lot of things had happened over that summer to where I don't, don't I didn't feel like I was getting that help. Um, but it is what it is. You know, I don't have any, it wasn't a personal thing towards, you know, any player or, or um, coach or, you know, owners or anything like that. Um, it was about myself, you know, getting to, to a place where, you know, I need to be. When it comes to that mental recalibration, has it helped or even how much has it helped just to have a change of pace, a different environment, uh, where to take your skills? Um, I think it has. I think um, just the way everybody's welcomed me here, um, has been great. You know, it's been a very positive experience, you know, just, just being here so far. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to what's to come. And a couple quick ones, just following up on the Philly stuff. Why do you think it got so bad there? If I knew, I, I would tell you everything. But um, there's just a lot of things internally that, you know, had to happen um, over time. And it just got to a place where I don't think it was good for me um, mentally. So, you know, it is what it is. It happened and, and uh, moving forward. So, and as far as playing with Kyrie and KD, how do you think what you do accentuates what they already do on the floor? Well, uh, I think it's going to be scary. Um, having those guys running alongside me, um, there's, you know, multiple different weapons on the floor. And I think at the pace we want to play at, it's, it's going to be unreal. I'm wondering, like, as as someone who's, you know, plays basketball for a living and loves the game, was it difficult to, you know, kind of stick with that? And what was the most challenging thing about that? Um, not doing what I love. Um, that was definitely the, the most difficult part, especially for that long. And, you know, when you take something away from somebody that, you know, what they love doing, it's, it's, it's hard for anybody. Um, so, you know, over time, you know, I worked on that and, and trying to stay in a positive place and get to, you know, where I need to be. Um, it was difficult, but, you know, um, you know, I'm blessed to be in this situation and have this opportunity. Ben, did you, who was your supporting cast that helped you get through this time? And was it hard not to, it seemed like for a while, every day, somebody was saying something, whether it was somebody, Sixers, media, there was, did you pay attention to that? And did any of that bite you? Um, I mean, this is the first time I'm really speaking out, right? So, Last six months, I had everybody saying something, but not everybody knew. So I can't really say anything negative towards anybody that was saying something because they just didn't know. And I'm not the type of person to try to put somebody down for something I don't know about. Um, that's just not me as a man. So, um, you know, I had my family there supporting me from day one. Um, friends, you know, I, I've made a ton of friends that work with the Sixers too. So it was never, you know, a personal thing. It was just for my well-being um, to get where I need to be to. And is there anything that was said that you heard that you'd like to clear up that you, you... man, if we will be here for a while, if that's the case, <laughs> <laughs> there's been, I mean, every, everybody had a source, right? There's hundreds of sources. I apologize if I'm getting ahead of ourselves too much, but you guys do have a game in Philly in a couple of weeks. Do you think you can be ready for that? You know, physically, mentally, you know, I imagine it's a pretty, I hope so. Lisa Salters. Hey Ben, uh, just you, you saying that you you know you want to get back to the to being the guy, the player that you are mentally, physically. Just where are you now mentally and physically? Where do you think you are? Um, physically, I think you know over the last six months I've been working, so I feel physically pretty good. Um, mentally, I'm getting there, so that's a it's an ongoing thing to just stay on top of that. Um, but I'm I think I'm heading in the right direction. Thank you, hey Ben. You, hey Ben, you said you were looking forward to that game against the Sixers. I'm curious, do you think the way all of this went down, the proximity, the quality of the rosters, you know, the caliber of players, yourself and James, do you think, A, that this is instantly now going to become a fierce rivalry? Um, I mean, I've been on the other side, so I've played Brooklyn in the first round and had them booing and Jared Dudley talking shit to me. So um, that was a lot of fun, though. I actually, I love Jared for that. Um, but no, I, I want everybody to be looking at us like we're the best team and we got to get there. Um, it's going to take time, but um, I'm positive we can do that. And, you know, I believe in, you know, coaches and, and the organization here and the players uh, to do that. And secondly, you talked about having to get in the right mental space to be able to play. When 
you see, or maybe you don't see them, when people are commenting or opining that this was not real, this is fake, these are lies, whatever. Do you take offense to that? No, because I can't tell somebody how they feel, right? I can't tell somebody, you know, you need to do this or that because I don't know how they feel. I don't know what they're going through. I don't know how they're processing things. So I can't do that, but I can't also put somebody else, you know, down for having those comments. I'm just not that person, you know, I'm never going to put my teammates down, um, my coaches or anything like that. So it's just, you know, it is what it is. Malika Andrews. Hey, Ben, um, I, I have two for you. I'm just curious. One, what was the communication like with Philadelphia on the way out? And as you look back, is there anything in order to kind of move forward that you would have done differently? Um, yeah, I think the the communication, I spoke to Elton. I spoke to Josh Harris. They called me. I spoke to Doc Rivers. Um, and I spoke to Tobias. There was a couple other places I spoke to about it. And, you know, they, they were happy, you know, for me to just be in a different situation and, you know, to, for me to get back on the floor eventually. So um, now overall, I think, you know, they, they supported me well enough through this. Did you speak with Joel? No, I did not. Thank you. Been a trade deadline day. Were you pretty nervous? And what were your emotions when you got the call, when you got the word that it was done and who, who gave you that information? Um, yeah, I was sitting there on my laptop with the TV in front. So my phone just started blowing up um, and it didn't feel real for a few days, honestly. So once I actually drove into the city, I was like, wow, I'm really here, um, which was very surreal because I got my family 30 minutes away. You know, I got my grandparents 30 minutes away. So it's nice to have them, you know, close by also. And uh now, I think um, just this whole experience has been kind of surreal. Was there like an emotional release of any sort? I don't think it really hit me until I was, you know, by myself. Because um, I was around my, my brothers and friends at the time. Um, so once it really happened, I had to really take, take some time to myself and really process it. Michael Grady. I'm just curious, that surreal feeling, Ben. Um, you hadn't been around teammates in, on a bench setting in a while. What were your emotions like? yesterday and celebrating with your teammates and watching the game unfold. Yeah, for me, it felt like it, it should feel always, you know, uh, my teammates embraced me as soon as I got here. Um, and then besides that, the fans were very welcoming, um, which was great. And, you know, the energy just in the locker room and, and just around the building was, it was uh, terrific. How soon after the trade, like who were your first conversations with? I know you said you were with your brother and then how soon after kind of digging through all your you know, texts and whatever you were getting, did you get to kind of really talk to uh, Katie and Kyrie and, you know, talk about what would happen going forward? Yeah, I mean, I spoke to Katie a couple of hours after. Um, and, you know, he, he was great in the phone, you know, he was very welcoming, so he's excited too. So, you know, I think it's just looking forward to getting on the floor with those guys uh, and that talent. David Aldridge. Ben, uh, specifically, you, you had a specific ball handling playmaking role in Philly. What do you think your specific role, your best role will be in in uh, Brooklyn? I think uh, I, I try to compare it to my early seasons with J.J. Redick, um, Ersan Eliasova, and, and Marco Bellinelli when we were, um, I think we were playing the Nets in the first round, or Miami in the first round. And um, just the way we were flowing and playing, um, that's, how, that's how I know how to play basketball. I'm a team player. I like to see everybody – scoring, contributing in whatever way they can. Um, and that's the way you got to play to win. So, you know, if you, if you want to be a winner, you got to play with all the guys on the floor and, and use everybody's abilities, uh, you know, and maximize the, the abilities that everybody has. Otis Livingston. Hey, Ben, welcome to Brooklyn. Um, you know, there are going to be some people out there that are skeptical, that are going to say that James Harden was faking his hamstring injury and that you were uh, maybe faking your mental health issues. What do you have to say to those people that saw you smiling yesterday during a shoot around um, and then on the bench as well? What do you say to those people that have skepticism about that? And where are you in that process? They should be happy. I'm smiling, honestly. Um, I've had some dark times over these last six months um, and I'm just happy to be in this situation with this team um, and organization. So people are going to say what they want. They've said it the last six months and I haven't come to, um, and it is what it is. So people are always going to have their own opinions. 
I mean, given that, given comments like that, do you think there needs to be a change in how we address or how we think about athletes with their mental health? For sure. I, I don't think people really understand the, I don't even look at it as pressure. There's just so many things going on within, you know, basketball and life as people. Um, but it is what it is also. I understand the business side. I understand all that. Um, but that's, that's something that, you know, people should be acknowledged and, and addressed if they do feel like they need some help in areas. Um, and it's okay to do that. We have time for one more question, Christian. Ben, what kind of work have you done to improve the free throw shooting percentage? No, I stopped working. Um, it's been in the gym, honestly. It's been in the gym working every day. Um, it's being consistent and, and getting that confidence. Definitely. Thank you, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.